Uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about how to hunt mammoths in the modern ages. So mammoths, you all know what they are. That's huge beasts that used to live happily you know, on our planets during millions of years ago. And they started to decline and disappear a thousand years ago. And they disappeared. But something will happen a few decades ago. They also started to reappear in the form of computer software. So at first, in the, probably in the 50s, 60s, but since then, they have grown both in number and sizes and to a point where I think most of us will at least meet one mammoth in our computer software one day, or we will meet one of them. So you know mammoths, it's a big, fat animal, which is slow, enjoy consuming a lot of resources, but also it's a wild beast, and if you try to approach it, to, you want to, to make it something, do, do something your way, it's going to attack you and be very aggressive. And experienced developers know that, but the young developers, you know, they, are, they master the, the art of hunting rabbits and birds. They think, okay, mammoths, just a big beater. I'm going to, to handle that beast with my refactoring skills. And this is what happened to them, you know, the mammoth just crushed them because mammoths eat young developers for breakfast. So it's only the experienced developer who know that a mammoth, you can't tame it, you know. Don't try to, to handle that beast. The only thing you can do is to kill them. And that's what our ancestors had done for many, many years, but we lost that, uh, that skills. So the modern way to, we have to rediscover the skills, and the modern way to talk about that is microservices. So this is what it is about. And I'm going to, to use the mantra of our ancestors, Hungacek Hitemuka, which is like, may the God be with us to handle and kill the mammoths. So what, is, what are microservices in short? Uh, microservices is not just about services, that's something we knew how to do before microservices. So it's about being micro, and micro is a Greek word which means being small. And small is really small, it's a few thousand lines of code at most. And because you are having a software that is a lot of small entities, of course you have many, um, you have numerous services. And because you have many, many little sheep instead of having a big mammoth, you have to, to make sure they are independent and you can easily replace them. So you, ha you should not have any dependency. So let's say in the ideal world, you replace the mammoth with many friendly little sheep, what it could look like. Well, this is an illustration of what it is developing with microservices. Look at all the little sheep that are happy to dance together and communicate, and you have an orchestrator that makes them happy to dance under the cloud. And the cloud, what do we have under the cloud? Of course, we have cloud computing, you know, the holy grail of all software developers. Imagine yourself putting cloud computing on your resume. I mean, I'm sure now you're very excited with the idea of doing microservices with your software. But we are a C++ developer, and how do we do microservices in C++? We're not really in this trend. Well, uh, we already split our software in components, but the new thing is just the communication between the components. They should be completely isolated and communicate through um, the network. And a good way to do this, usually we use, uh, they, they use uh, message queues for, to communicate between services. You can also use gRPC. gRPC is based on protobuf. So Andreas, you are a master at mammut hunting. <laughs> Congratulations to you. It's the same thing. You use a readable text file, and from this text file you will generate everything. And this text file is really interesting because it describes both your messages and your services. Because after all, what is a service if not the way to exchange messages? So from there, you, you, read, you generate code for many different languages, and it gives you new opportunities, like you're writing your test code of regarding your C++ code. You can write test cases in Python or other languages. OK, but sounds new and exciting, but at the same time, I scratched my head like, wait, a bunch of many small components, uh, programs like you can replace that are independent, is that really new for us, for C++ developers, or even C developers? Does it remind you something? What about the Unix shell? It was created four years ago, and this is just what it is about. It's a collection of independent software that communicate through message queues. Pipes, what are pipes? It's unidirectional message queues where each message is one character uh, large. So this is just improving the, this technique that has proven to be really useful, and we know how to do this. It was done on very old computers that are less powerful than your modern watches, so it should be feasible on our modern hardware. 
So the lesson from the, the Unix shell is do not focus on each microservices. Develop a wider view of, okay, I'm actually not creating uh, just little programs. I'm creating a real scripting language and I should uh, focus on how to combine each part to create a platform to develop actually de de several declinations of my software. And that brings us to the difference between developing a product and developing a platform. We are used to develop product that you sell with a license, you know. And the modern trend is to, like Microsoft has moved to that trend, you no longer ship a product with a license. You want to, your public to subscribe to a license, uh, to um, a service. So each month you pay monthly. And if you want to subscribe to a magazine, well, you better, if I tell you, eh, subscribe to my magazine and I release my magazine only once a year, you will ask me, what's the point? But if I release frequently my magazine, then you will be okay to, to subscribe for it. So that's the point of microservices, is to easier the, um, the release cycle of my software. And there is a great paper about that with the Google versus Amazon platform rant. I really invite you to read that because it's a really uh, helpful way to change your mindset about how to release and develop software. So this is the new world we are entering in, and I invite you to learn and document yourself about that if you don't want to end like mammoth in the future and maybe disappear from, uh, from the field. Thank you for your listening. Thank you.